Agatha says, uh, my therapist told me that I have a strong attraction to dangerous people. And so he had asked me, you know, well, do you want to just spend the day with a lion? Yeah. I think too, so, and you'll have to kind of do some soul searching and figure out what, when does that attraction first start? Because I think for most people, it starts with love bombing. It's not that people are necessarily attraction, attracted to like bad boys or maybe even dangerous people. It's earlier than that. It's that, that level of, you know, constant um, attention and affection. That's all about the love bombing. It's that level of intensity that I think gets most people. Most emotional manipulators are intense. They get their sights locked on to their target. And we mistake that level of interest as like flattering oftentimes. Like, wow, okay, I'm now on the radar of this person and they just seem to be so into me but really it's very, it's very predatory, you know, it's not flattering. So if, if you can kind of change how you, your relationship with love bombing and, and slow, really like understanding love bombing and, and understanding that whirlwind situation and how to slow things down, understanding that you have the power to, to slow things down and that it's okay and healthy for you to set the pace of every single relationship that's in your life and that other people don't get to vote on that. And again, that might sound like really selfish and very one-sided, but it's, it's not because <laughs> it's your life, you know? So even if like, if you meet a new person and they're very quick to be like, I want to, I want to see you tonight and I want to be with you and I want to take you out for dinner. And I want, you know, like, it's okay for you to say no, it's okay for you to, to slow things way down. You know, if somebody new comes into your life and they're like, I really want to take you out. I want to spend, you know, I want to take you out for dinner and then I want to spend New Year's Eve with you. For example, you know, that like for me, that's, that's like prime time, right? So I'm not going to go spend like six hours with a total stranger, especially that night of the year, you know? So for me, it might be like, you know what, we can meet for coffee. Like I'd be up for maybe going for coffee, but like, I, you know, like I'm not going to spend six hours with a stranger or I don't, I'm just making up examples here. Or if, uh, I, I guess that the point being is you set the pace and getting okay with that and getting okay with being uncomfortable about that because it's going to just take practice. And once you slow stuff down, and I will tell you that love bombing and that level of intensity, it can really feel like a drug. I think that's one of the hardest things to break, even though we know that that love bombing is not real. It's not sincere. It always leads to pain. Normal people don't come on like that. It's only people that are trying to use, basically use us for something you know, that tend to come on hot and heavy out of the blue. So it's hard to let go because it can feel so intoxicating, you know, and it's exciting. And especially if a person doesn't have a lot of like other stuff going on in your life, it's very easy to be like, well, but I really want to talk to this other person for hours upon hours every day. And I really want, I'm totally okay with just giving them as much time as they want to soak up. And that's, a, that's a problem. This is why it's such a big, it's so important for us to have our own hobbies and our own friends and like your own stuff going on in your life. So that you're not going to feel pulled to wanting to make a person that you don't know that well your whole life, because it's so, and I see this in the support group all the time. It's so easy for us to like, if a person's vulnerable and they're lonely and they've come out of abuse and they're just, you know, they're hurting. It's a very normal for them to want to find somebody like to find love, to find somebody that's safe. And even if they've been out for years, they can still be susceptible to this. And then they, they start dating. And like that first date, they're like, Oh, I've met this amazing new person. You know, I hope this is the one. And I hope that I'm going to marry this person, or I hope that, 
and they're already like going so far ahead. And it's like, the reality is like, you don't even know this person. You've got, you've got to slow things down, you know, moving full speed ahead like that emotionally or, and, or physically is a recipe for disaster, but it, it just, it takes practice and it takes practice with us reframing how we understand love bombing and this whirlwind and not, and not thinking that it's the fairy tale. If, if, if a person feels like a soulmate or if it feels like a fairy tale, it's, that's a big sign to slow things way down, like way, 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 way down. If you're feeling like addicted to them, like you're checking your phone, hoping they've messaged you, hoping, you know, whatever, that's a big sign to slow things way down. And that doesn't necessarily come from being hypervigilant due to PTSD or abuse. It just means that, you know, it's not healthy. And, you know, healthy is realizing that you have value and uh, that you value your emotions, you value your time, you value your energy, and that you don't just give all that stuff freely to anybody, to anybody and everybody, you know, that it takes, that that stuff needs to be earned, not just freely given.